if you look, we uninterrupted hearing we gave you. Though it was supposed to be question time, you delivered a sermon and we gave you a, you delivered a sermon and we gave you a fair hearing. Now, this is a debate. Now what you're trying to do is now you want to debate. No, I'm not debating, not, sir. Look, I'm spirit, just making the observations. The spirit you have come back to the mic when I'm not finished with it yet. This is the spirit of debate. And if you want to debate, Father, look, I'm open. Any, any Roman Catholic father wants to debate with me in Pakistan, anywhere, you call me and I'll come along and debate with you. But let me finish. This segment is during the lecture that was delivered by Sheikh Ahmed Didat in Taj Mahal Hotel, Pakistan. And in a Q&A session, a certain Catholic priest came and asked Sheikh Ahmed Didat some important issues, as well as tried to argue with him. Firstly, as a Roman Catholic priest and, as, and you as a kind of leader of the Muslim community, we both have certain responsibilities. Responsibilities before God. And that responsibility is that we share the spirit of our religions with others. We don't speak of conversion. We don't speak of making numbers. I have just come from a meeting in Rome with both Muslims and Christians present where the topic was mission and dafwa. Mission and? Dafwa, the Arabic Dawa. word for mission. Dawa. Dawa. Now, in that particular group, there were 18 Muslims from all parts of the Muslim world and 18 Christians from all parts of the Christian world. The purpose being that we learn to dialogue with one another, that we try to find the spirit of our religions, that we don't point fingers at one another through tafsir, where perhaps the other in his own faith does not quite understand it from the other points of view of the other person's faith. I've been hearing you for the last two hours now saying different things about Christianity from your point of view. Many of those points I could debate, I could question, but this is no audience or no forum for that. What I'd rather suggest is that we should be concerned about spreading the spirit of our religions. For me, the spirit of who Jesus Christ means for me. For you, what the spirit of Islam, as a religion of peace, brought by the Prophet Muhammad and settled to the people of Arabia and now the Muslim world, what it means for you. In that way, I think we can learn to live in peace and harmony with one another. We can learn truly to be part of God's people on the way to whom you call Allah Ta'ala. I think that's part of the message also of Islam in view of the Akhirat, is the part of the Christian message in view of the life to come. And I think if we really want to live in peace and harmony in our world, the message of peace is more important than really picking points of tafsir or points of theology. The purpose being that both we Christians and Muslims learn to live in peace and harmony with one another, understanding the spirit of our religions and not to tear one another apart. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I think Dr. Ronnie D'Souza must be your father. The Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Ronnie D'Souza. No, he's an old priest, and that's why he couldn't come. He's also suffers from death. But he's, he sent this thing to me, no, yes, questions but he's, that he wanted me to answer. He's just another Roman Catholic priest. Yes, retired Roman Catholic priest. But he, he took the trouble of sending this to me for me to answer at the meeting. No, no. You got time for all that to give another lecture now. If he was here, he would have been the first man. You see, it's very easy for people to talk about dialogue. His Holiness the Pope, if you know, I'm sure you do know his movements. When he went to Turkey, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. When he went to Nigeria, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. When he went to Kenya, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. And 
I was waiting for people to have a dialogue because nobody knows about this dialogue you're talking about. These people here, they never heard about 80 guys gathering there in Rome, Vatican, and they had a dialogue. What did you discuss? Any of you know? So this is... Please, please, please keep quiet. So the people, the whole world, they don't know what is going on in the Vatican. You had those 80 Muslims, 80 Muslims, yes. You fed them well, you looked after them, and we say, mashallah, you must have done a beautiful job. You see, when His Holiness, he made these suggestions, wherever he goes, he's talking about dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. So I wrote to His Holiness, I said, Your Holiness, you're talking about dialogue, I'm prepared to come and have a dialogue with you in St. Peter's in Rome at the Vatican, at your time and convenience. No reply. So I wrote another letter to him, no reply. I sent him a telegram, no reply. I sent him another telegram. You have your secretariat there. Maybe the Pope doesn't see all these things that's coming in, but the people are there, not dead. No reply. The, the second telegram, I get a reply that His Holiness is prepared to receive me in the Secretariat. That means in private. So I wrote back to him. I said, look, this is not a matter between Ahmad Didat and the Pope. This is a matter between Islam and Christianity. There are a thousand million Muslims and 1,200 million Christians who would be interested in knowing what is going on between Ahmad Didat and the Pope. And Muslims, my people, my younger generation from Durban, Johannesburg, and Cape Town, they want to charter three planes. People from the UAE, they want to come. People from the UK, they want to come. And the Christians themselves, the news media, the TV media, everybody wants to cover it. How big is your secretariat? No reply. Again, a telegram. No reply. Another telegram. No reply. Until as if from heaven. You know, Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel, he doesn't come anymore. But as if by, from heaven, somebody had a, a pamphlet there just now. Let me have a look at it. Yes, yes. This is it. This picture, can you see this picture? This is a genuine picture, untouched by human hands. Can you see this picture? Can you see the picture? This is His Holiness, the Pope. What is he doing? This is what is called hide and seek. Where is the reverend? Go on. Yeah, have a look at it. Have a closer look at it. No, I'd like to explain rather. No, no. Look, this rather is, than hear your this interpretation. Is, I'm still answering. I'm still on my feet. If you look, we uninterrupted hearing we gave you. Though it was supposed to be question time, you delivered a sermon and we gave you a, you delivered a sermon and we gave you a fair hearing. Now, this is a debate. Now what you're trying to do is now you want to debate. No, I'm not debating, and, uh, sir. Look, the I'm spirit, just making the spirit, observations. The spirit, you have come back to the mic when I'm not finished with it yet. This is the spirit of debate. And if you want to debate, Father, look, I'm open. Any, any Roman Catholic father wants to debate with me in Pakistan, anywhere, you call me and I'll come along and debate with you. But let me finish. These are all new, new faces coming up now. <laughs> okay, right. So as this, this picture came from heaven, and some poet in Pakistan described it, Look, this is as if you're going to play hide and seek. He's playing hide and seek, His Holiness. Look at this. In other words, this is actually what he's doing to the Muslims. Now, this game is a very old game. These Christians are playing upon us and they're catching the Muslims out left, right, and center. Bhole bhale musalman. See, bhole bhale in English they call simpletons. Simpletons, you think, simpleton means tons of simplicity. That's what you think. It means be wakuf. Be wakuf musalman. Simpletons. Right. So, listen to this. So, talking about Dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Does he mean dialogue? I'm telling him that the Bible says, come, let us reason together in the book of Isaiah. The Quran says, Qul, ya ahlal kitab ta'alam. Ila kalimatin sawa'im bainana wa Let's come to common terms. Get us onto a common platform. 
Yes, the Bible says so, the Quran says so, and His Holiness says so. So let's have a dialogue. No, 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 no. They don't mean dialogue. What they mean is go and convert the Muslims. But if they use the word convert, you're going to react. So this is a diplomatic way of telling the people go and convert the Muslims, but call it a dialogue. Now these Muslims are being made fool of. Look, Allah is telling you to have a dialogue. About what? What were they talking? I want to know. Ask them. Anybody at a what have you been talking? Allah says, Ya Halal Kitab, O people of the book, Ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawa in bainana wa bainakum. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. And what about what? He says, number one, Allah na abuda illallah, that we worship none but Allah, wala nushrika bihi shay'an, and that we associate no partners with him, wala yattakhiza ba'duna ba'dan arbaabam min dunillah, and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fa in tawallaw, fa kulu shadu bianna muslimun, but if they turn back, tell them that we are Muslims, we have submitted our wills to the will of Allah. What are we going to talk about? Number one, Allah na abuda illallah. Start with that. Allah says, start talk about that. Not about the price of tea in Pakistan or the price of onions in China. He wants you to talk about Allah's unity. So he said, we also believe in one God. So look, Allah says, believe in one God. He said, we believe in one God. He said, what God? He says, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Allah says, tell them, Wala takulu salasa, don't say Trinity, in tahu khairal lakum, this is stop it, it'll be better for you. In namallahu ilahu wahid, for your Allah is one Allah, he's not three in one. This is the dialogue Allah is telling you to have. But what do you have? The guys are making monkeys out of you, left, right, and center. You read a book, Muslim, Christian Mission and Muslim Dawah, published by the Islamic Foundation. It'll cost you two pounds. They had a die this thing in 1975 in Chambisi in Switzerland. All the Christian giants and the Muslim giants, they had this dialogue for how many days? And they passed resolutions. How not to steal each other's children. How not to steal. Not what to do, what not, how not to steal. So telling the Christians, look, don't adopt this unfair means in the guise of education, in the guise of medicine, please don't do that. This is what the Muslim is crying. He's not talking what Allah is telling him. And they too, they say, you see, look, your Muslim countries, in Saudi Arabia, we have no chance to go and preach openly. In the Arab countries, we have no chance. Please, talk to them. Is that what Allah is talking, talking, telling you to talk about? No. But they made monkeys out of them, and after 10 years, they took out a book, the Islamic Foundation in Leicester. They say, immediately they left the continent. The Christians started a multi-million dollar project among the Fulanis in Nigeria, against the resolution they had passed. So what they're doing to you with these dialogues? Achha, achha, khana khelate hain, chai pilate hain. And then he said, nah, we are very good people. You are all very, very nice. We are hypocrites. All. Hypocrisy. Playing and they're making a fool of you and getting the better of you. Because bhole bhale musalman. Then I was in Birmingham. Dr. Abdullah Nasif of the Rabita. He's there. We're having lunch together. Sitting with me, he says, Ahmad, what happened about that dialogue with the Pope? So I explained to, to him what I was explaining to you just now. He says, you know, the Pope did it to me. I said, what did he do? He says, you know, he called me for a dialogue. Dr. Abdullah Nasif of the Rabita, World Muslim League. He said, they also called me and I went. Bhole bhale musalman. He went. And he said, they made me to sit in a waiting room. I sat, expecting the Pope to come. Then, after five minutes, they took me to another waiting room, a better quality. I sat there waiting for the Pope. Lika Allah. Astaghfirullah. As if you're going to see the Almighty now. He didn't come. He took him to another waiting room. Higher grade. Suspense. In comes the Pope. Very humble man. Most psychological. Beautiful. Look, everybody loves him. He's a master psychologist. When he came to Pakistan, where he landed in Islamabad, he made the sujood. He put his head on the foreground, and the Muslims of Bole Bale Musliman came to my Sizdakya. Hamari Zamaat, I mean the Sizdakya. He only needs a gentle push. Zara, usko zara, dakka marenge, the Muslim ban jayega. When he goes to India, he kisses the ground. The Hindus are happy, blessing my land. The Hindu is happy, the Christian is happy, the atheist, everybody is happy. Master psychologist. 
So he received Dr. Abdullah Nasir. Ahlan was ahlan. I don't think he said that. But welcome. So you come from Egypt? He says, no. Maybe he was fishing for somebody from Egypt. He said, no, I come from Saudi Arabia. He said, you know, you don't allow us to build churches uh, in your country. So Abdullah Nasir had the presence of mind. He said, you allow us to build mosques in the Vatican? He says, no. I mean... <laughs> He said, no, no, in other parts of the country, in Saudi Arabia, he said, look, we allowed you freedom of religion, freedom of worshipping. But what you have been doing, you are making each and every one of them a center of propagation for your religion. Now from those centers, we give you freedom. You want to catch the Sri Lankan there. You want to catch the Koreans there. You want to catch the Filipinos there. Is this the dialogue Allah is telling you to have them? <laughs> then I go to Malaysia. Tunku Abdul Rahman, the old man, the ex-prime minister, the old man. I meet him, and this was news. Dialogue, dialogue with the Pope. He said, Ahmad, what happened? So I tell him what I told you. He says, you know, Ahmad, he did it to me also. He's doing it to everybody. He's making monkeys of everybody. I said, what did he do? He said, he called me for a dialogue. And I went. He said, Bole bale musulman. And we went. He said, I went. So as soon as I met him, he says, you know, my people, some Roman Catholic priests, were caught in Sabah, trafficking drugs, very serious kind, in Malaysia. So he said, look, can't you intercede with the Sabah government to let our people go? Is that the dialogue Allah is talking to about? Huh? Can you see? They're making monkeys out of our people, left, right, and center. Allah is telling you, have a dialogue with him, but about Allah's unity, that you know shirk, they're doing shirk. But no Muslim dare talk to the Pope or the Christian like that. No Muslim dare. Why? Because we are an emasculated people. Sab khassi ban gaya, khassi. Yes, emasculated. Allah is telling you what to talk, but you're too clever. Because you're too clever, you're getting caught out. However, 